Live with day five. All right, day five is going to be easy. We're going to have another five positions, and then I went over some of the sidelines to the positions we're going to look to at today. And one of the sidelines recommended by the author of the book that we're plagiarizing, copying, using as a repertoire is busted. One of the lines is busted. I mean, I'm talking about dropping a piece kind of busted. So yeah, we're not going to cover that line. We're going to cover that line later. Uh, we're going to just review. Go turn off my uh, turn off my monitor there, so I don't hear myself talking 30 seconds in delay. So um, we're going to review what we've done for the last four days really quickly, and then we're going to add our five positions, of course, to our homework quickly because we want to have this done quickly. And then we're going to get to the profound thing at the end of this live video, and I'll tell you in advance: the profound thing is bad news just bracing you now and it's not the, the android 11 update which is already bad news because that's the next thing i need to work on i'm going to put out a test for android 11 if you have an, a brand new phone right now chances are it's not running just opening's wizard very well and hopefully we'll get that fixed this afternoon but that's not the bad news stay tuned for the bad news so we're in the uh, chess preparation business, openings and end games. People remind me, but openings mostly because that's what we like to prepare for. And we want to remind ourselves why we're doing this because every position we prepare is going to be better than any position that we analyze when we're over the board, right? And of course, the mission of this challenge is to expand the number of positions that you know that you've actually prepared. You can actually play without thinking, gain time on the clock. And the secret to understanding as we prepare is to type in each position's comment why we chose the move. Like we touched on yesterday, sometimes why we chose it isn't why the author would choose it, isn't why a grandmaster would choose it, isn't why anybody else would choose it. Sometimes we choose it because we want to play a tricky position. So, yeah, I could go on and on about that. <laughs> so, the secret to recalling something is to em add emotional intensity. It's one of the oldest tricks in the memory book. So when you're putting a comment in a position where you think I might not be able to remember to drop this knight on d5 and stop all the threats, you want to put something really, really emotional there and, and drastically increase your chances of remembering it a year from now when you finally come across that position. So let's flip over to Chess Openings Wizard and let's add the positions that we promised. So we left off here with a move that we probably I know I couldn't have I couldn't have figured out over the board, but this e5 move discombobulates White's position for a while, which is very cool. And so let's go over here. So uh, he looks at the line Bishop takes e5, and in, in each case we're going to play c4. So if he takes with the d pawn, we're going to play c4. If he takes with the bishop, we're going to play c4, clogging up even further. So let's look at the bishop takes line. So we've added, uh, let's say, well c4. We already had that in there from yesterday. So back to our hymnals. Dun, dun, dun. Kaufman's new repertoire for black and white. And we're on uh, page 254 in the right column of our hymnals. Okay, we're deep in this variation. At this point, what does white try? White will often try to take that knight right now. Take a look at this position. Should we take the bishop back? Because, hey, that's, that's a whole bishop. No, actually, if we're prepared, and we are, uh, the, the, uh, and the engines are in agreement on this one, we should be either taking on a3 with the bishop or taking with the rook, which keeps our attack going. Actually, they both transpose because if you take what, you, what, uh, what, the, what the engines are recommending is, is actually checking with the bishop first, right? I won't put the move in because that's not one of our official added moves, but you can imagine that the bishop coming out and checking right here, right? Checking the king. At that point, the king generally wants to flee to e2, which, again, clogs his position for a bit because he'd like to be able to get pieces out on that square. And then, once he's done that, then you can take on a3 with either the bishop or the rook. The, engine, the engines are happy with both, actually. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the recommended way from the book that we're studying on a3 with the rook, which starts this great attack. So we've taken that, and then generally you're going to see queen b2 here. And then we get to play the bishop before check. It's under uh, it's under guard of the uh, knight. Let's see. And then queen e2 is probably what we expect here. And then rook a2. What a great attack. Okay, let's see if we've got from 20 to 25 positions. We open up about the c-book. And we have shifted from, I'm sorry, 25 to 30 to 31 positions. So again, today you get a bonus position. Yay. Okay, so that's, that's how we've done our homework. It was that easy. Um, I, again, to completely do your homework, you'd go back and put in 
uh, emotionally intense comments into these positions, right? So uh, let's see, let's get rid of this guy so we don't have to be looking at that. Okay, so you go back in and dot these, these, these positions with emotionally intense comments about why we're choosing this move, why we're leaving the bishop where it is. Now here, again, I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> if we cover this further in the next few days, and I, I won't actually cover it for the next couple of days, and here's why, I'll be working on the Android 11 update, so I won't be like broadcasting live tomorrow. I probably won't be broadcasting live every single day of the 30-day challenge, but I wanna talk about that for a minute. So for 30 days, every day, we're going to be adding five positions to our repertoire, right? And at the end of this, we'll have an extra 150 positions that we're really familiar with. We want to get in the habit. Again, I want to tell you that the practice of doing 20 positions a day and then not doing any for a few days, thinking, well, I'm still ahead at five per day. No, no, no. It is a better practice to have a daily regimen so that you don't break the chain. So that every day you get up with the expectation of all I need to do is learn five more positions middle game positions, end game positions, tactics, openings. Most people are gonna go for openings, right? So that's what you wanna do. So we talked about Fisher uh, yesterday and uh, what he, one of his secrets was he prepared with more than just one opening. I'm not gonna try to sell you on that concept unless you really wanna become a grandmaster. If you are on the track to becoming a grandmaster, the thing to know about all GMs is they can play multiple openings. They don't necessarily stick to a repertoire. If you wanna become like Fisher, then you stick to a repertoire and you're still able to play all openings as we saw from that example from the world championship game <clears throat> excuse me with Spassky where he played a d4 transposing into a queen pawn opening to as he put it to give them something to think about so what's the bad news uh, let's try to find a way to put this ah the bad news the bad news the bad news i gotta think here I may not be able to put this the, the pithiest way. The bad news, the bad news is that your improvement is not linear. You've probably already experienced this. You've played to a certain level and you reach what chess players generally know is a ratings plateau. And you stay on that plateau for a while. Some of us have been on the same plateau for 10 years because we just play at whatever level. And if you look back at your own history, you probably can identify those plateaus. For me, I started the game right at 1200, and I stayed at 1200 to 12, 1250 for the longest time. And then, switch over here, and then I went to about uh, the 1500 level, and I stayed between 1500 and 1550 for a year, two years. It was a long time. And then I made a leap to the 1800 to 1850 range. Now, I've probably been there for the last 10 years easily, probably more. I don't actually play much anymore except playing online. I spend most of my time working on the software and, and getting other chess players to play better. So you've probably seen this in your own history, wherever you've been, no matter what you're currently at, there are plateaus that you can be snagged at. So it's non-linear. So in the case of a year of this challenge of doing five new positions a day that you absolutely cement with emotional intensity and understanding. Total recall, total understanding. At the end of that year, at 300 days, let's say, at five positions, that's 1,500 positions more that you know, that you can play from rote instantly, that you understand, that you probably have a lot of experience with playing games, because if you have 1,500 positions in your repertoire that you can play instantly, you're playing them a lot, especially if you're playing them in online, online games. And then, let me tell you the good news, is what happens after the bad news, the plateau that can last for months, your rating will suddenly jump. If you're an 1,800 player, you'll suddenly find yourself playing in the 2150 range, and then you'll be stuck as an expert for <laughs> six months or a year until you find another breakthrough when maybe adding another thousand positions to your knowledge and you'll find yourself suddenly a master and then suddenly an IM and then suddenly GM norms and then from there who knows so I'm not going to promise anybody they're going to become world champion doing any of this because you have to find your own way in this but that's what Fisher did I'll bring Fisher back in for my last part of this video right Fisher Became a grandmaster like any other grandmaster. He was quick at it. He set some records when he was young. And then he became one of the thousand grandmasters in the world and stayed one of the thousand grandmasters in the world for a while. And then there was a year where he shot up to become world champion material, candidate material, and then finally world champion. 
What happened in that year? People asked him what happened in that year. And get, you remember what his pithy answer was from his biography? It was, I got good. There you go. There's your quote for the day. I got good. Bobby Fischer. In that year, he made this quantum leap. So chess improvement for him, for me, and for you is non-linear. There will be plateaus. And then you will bust out of them. But the bad news is there will be plateaus. Stick with this. Stick with this challenge for 30 days. Get back to me if it hasn't made a huge difference in your play. And I won't be having a video right away uh, tomorrow, maybe not even the next day. I'll let you know after the Android 11 update is actually working on these new phones. And then I'll get back to you and resume some videos, live videos again for this challenge. But keep going every day. I want to see those posts that I posted five and with emotional intensity. I'll see you later. And I know that slide says we're hanging at tomorrow at noon. I thought I would, but we'll not be hanging tomorrow at noon today anyway. Not unless the Android 11 update goes super smoothly. Don't bet on it. I'll see you soon.